By the end of this tutorial, your edits will actually improve. Today, we're diving into slide movement inside DaVinci Resolve. Smooth slides, quick slides, momentum, all of that will be covered in this video. Lock in and let's get into it. So the three main things that you need to make a slide look good in DaVinci Resolve are good graphs, framers, and a sense of momentum. You wanna make sure that the intention is there. So with my clip selection, I have the character looking to the left and it's gonna to go to this scene, the girl, and it's gonna be sliding left to right. So let's get in with this. Let's go into the first comp and what you need, and I highly recommend downloading this, go to my Discord server and get the Kawa editing pack. It will give you framers to use and some shakes. Highly recommend using that. If you don't have it, no problem just keep following along. So what you need is a transform node, a offset framer, and this is optional, but I like having one frame of offset at the end. And you also need a shake. You can use Ikawa Shake Final. That's kind of my favorite shake right now. It pretty much recreates S Shake from After Effects. And I will make a video on that soon, but you can stick with the regular camera shakes if you don't have it. All of them pretty much work. The main thing that really matters is the graph that you use. And also you don't wanna have the pan amplitude up because we're going from left and right. You don't really wanna shake that will affect those left and right values. So let me get my shake in there like that. And let's get to keyframing. If you're not familiar with keyframing, I suggest looking at the tutorials that I have in the description. It's like a whole playlist to master keyframing. But if you pretty much got the gist of it, keep watching. I'm going to disable these two nodes for now. Let's focus on the transform node. So if we want a long, smooth slide, we're pretty much going to need to elongate the slide across more frames. So if I wanted like a very slow slide, I'll let me keyframe at the end and keyframe somewhere around like the start or middle of the clip and make sure your spline graph is up, highlight them, press S and make a J curve like this. Hold Alt and drag to the right and pretty much the amount that you drag this thing to the right will determine how sharp or fast your shake is. This first keyframe right here is pretty much controlling the whole speed of the shake. So if you want a really quick shake, you would want to bring it closer to the end keyframe and have like a sharp graph like this. If you want a longer or smooth shake, you would want to take this first keyframe and drag it back a decent amount and keep that J curve in there. And for values to use, like how far do I need to move to make the shake look good? you actually don't need to move that much. A lot of people love going all the way over here. No, 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 that's not needed. You just need a little bit to create a sense of movement in your head. So you can go back to around 0.6 here, doesn't really matter. As long as you have good momentum with this, it's going to look good. If I'm doing jug edits, I usually do wrapped edges. If I'm doing anything else, mirrored edges. And let's play what we got here. It looks decent. Uh, let me fix up the graph by taking this first keyframe and dragging it over just so it's a little bit sharper. And you want to mirror that on the second clip. So go into the second clip and do the same thing as before. Get a transform node, a offset framer, and a shake. That keyframe at the start and I'm going to go like 10 frames forward. Uh, same rules as before, but instead of the first keyframe determining how fast or quick the slide is, it's going to be the second keyframe and have a sharp J curve or a loose J curve. Doesn't really matter. Just make sure the curve is there. And for the values of how far you want to slide, again, doesn't really matter. Just make sure it's not too hot. And when I mean too high, I mean all the way over here. You don't want all these edges and stuff. Okay. So let's play it back. Now we have a decent looking slide. And if I want it to be slower or smoother, I'll take this first keyframe, drag it back and just fix it up a little bit. So it stays on this line. The same for this one and fix up the graph. And now we have an even slower, smooth slide. So that's how that works. Now you might be wondering, uh, we have the shake node and the offset frame. What are we going to do with that? I'm going to go to the end of the comp and keyframe the X offset wrap. When you do offset framers, it's pretty much going to create one frame of directional blur and I'll create the illusion of movement. And that illusion of movement is called momentum. And when you have that follow through to the next clip, regardless of what graph you have, the framer is going to determine how fast that slide will look. These framers will emphasize the slides and make them look a little bit better and it will Will affect the movement. So if I turn up this directional blur, for example, one that's really sloppy, I don't recommend doing it, but it creates the illusion of having more movement in between these two characters. Take your whole graph, like control A, hold alt and move it back one frame. That's because the last frame of this slide is going to be the offset frame. There you go. Now it looks more completed. Okay. Let's get the shakes in there. 
I'm going to add a shake final and keyframe at the end. And I'm going to go maybe like eight frames back and set the amplitude to zero. Turn down the frequency and I'm going to turn off X shake because you don't want the directional left and right movement to affect the actual slide itself. And you kind of want to have a S curve for when you're starting the slide. And on the second clip, you want a J curve for the graph like this. So let me turn down my frequencies, make the shake look good. Actually, I think I'm going to extend this more throughout the clip. So there's more momentum with the slide. And with that slight shake right there, it just adds so much more movement and momentum to it. Looks great. And if you're using the default camera shake, so let me get that out. You want to set the edges to mirrored, but you want to turn down X deviation and just keyframe overall strength. So when I say amplitude, I'm referring to overall strength and the same thing will apply here. Fix. So just get that J curve in there. And even with the regular camera shake, it looks nice. Okay. So that's how you make a quick shake and also a smooth shake. You have a little bit of momentum in there and it's looking nice. What if I told you that you don't have to have the clips right next to each other for the slide to even make sense? And this is a technique that I've seen from Mikawa and probably a bunch of other editors, but I just never really picked up on it. So what you want to do is take your clip and drag it back like a couple of frames, right? And now we have this black space in between of our clips here. And I'm going to just add a little bit more directional blur right before that offset framer like this. And I'm going to turn up the shake a little bit more so it's more more intense. Now we have this space in between. I'm going to get another fusion comp and make it like two frames. And then I'm going to make another one that's like one frame. And in between these fusion comps are going to be like black frame. So what I'm going to do is take the camera shake best or Ikawa X shake, turn the motion blur all the way up and turn down the smoothness. You can mess with the amplitude. This is only going to be for a couple of frames, but what you want to do is create some pretty much frames of directional blur in between these slides. And you can also get like a brightness and contrast and play the color. And you could literally get random scenes. You can get random pictures where I take literally a picture of my face and I use that as the framer and it just works because of how good this method is. And you could even change the color, make it whatever you want. So I kind of want to make it somewhat match the next scene. And magically like that, even using random pictures, you have a slide that's extended and just has a lot more impact for some reason. And that's because we used framers of black and directional blur in between the slide to create a sense of momentum. And I just love doing this sort of stuff on all types of edits, and it really just increases that production value just a little bit. So I highly encourage trying this trick of just taking your clips, separating them together and using random framers in the middle of it to create a sense of momentum inside of the slide. And there's more things you can do to motivate that momentum, such as brightness and contrast, and like making it darker like that at the end. So you have like one frame of darkness. So it transitions into the black frame a little bit more smoothly. And if you go frame by frame here, these framers don't really make sense, you know, but when you play it all back, it looks really good for some reason. And this is just something that I've seen Ikawa and other After Effects editors do. It just looks amazing. And that is how you put momentum, shakes and framers into your slides to make them look way better. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Clout VFX out.